Happy Thursday, Chapel Hill. Um, you know, I always feel awkward when I do this in my backyard because I don't know which of my neighbors might be outside and think I'm weird because I'm talking to myself. Um, but it's a gorgeous day today and we all need to be spending a little bit of time outside if we can. Um, so I decided to be out here. Um, and, and I've been, you know, I was walking around the house this morning trying to decide what I was going to say today, what I felt like God was, was calling me to, to bring to our mind, our collective mind. And all I could think as I walked around the house was, I wish I had um, musical abilities like George and Kara and Luis and Mallory, um, because that just, you know, there's something about music that really does soothe the soul or, or um, sometimes empower the soul, encourage the soul. Uh, music just does it so naturally. And I don't have that gift. Um, and so I was kind of feeling, um, not really pouty, but definitely like, like what I have is much less to offer, you know? And then, um, and, and as soon as I start thinking things like that, you know, God always zings me. Um, because of course that's not how God works. And, you know, I was reminded of all the, the verses in scripture that talk about, um, about the, for one thing, the different spiritual gifts, you know, and there's this, there's this huge list of them and, and, um, we are and has spiritual gifts, um, so that we can do the work for God's kingdom. So those came to mind first and it's like, okay, um, I get it. But then, um, I started thinking, but then what came to mind when I went and grabbed my Bible and, and, um, got outside was, um, one of those scriptures that really does help guide me throughout my life. Um, there's really two of them. And I have said, uh, many times that my favorite, um, scripture verse, if I had, if I could only pick one, it would be John 10, 10, where Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Um, I think that anyway, I can go on and on about why that one is my favorite, but it, I think it, it affects so much of our lives and how we treat other people. But the, but then the second one, the one that kind of tells me about how to be in ministry, um, because quite often, um, I, I, I lose confidence that, um, that I, I should be doing this kind of, kind of thing, you know? Um, I think like so many of us, and especially a lot of us now, you know, when we're separated from each other and we can't do those things that we naturally do to care for one another. And so the, the scripture that came to mind, um, the neighborhood alarm has been sounded, so it may get noisy here in a minute. But the scripture that came to mind was in 1 Peter chapter 4. Um, and, it, and I used to focus just on 11b, like I even let go of 11, the beginning of 11, um, because I didn't even have the confidence to claim that. But today, is when I opened up my scripture, um, I, I opened up my Bible, I saw, I, I decided I wanted to go back just a bit. Um, so Paul is writing, uh, Peter, excuse me, it's called First Peter, is writing this. Um, and Peter honestly believed when Christ died that he was going to come back like very shortly. And so this, um, four chapter, chapter four, verse seven begins with the end of all things is near. And we can sit here and we could say the end of our isolation is near, but that's not what Peter was talking about. The end of, um, my time here at Chapel Hill is, near. but none of that counts. What, what, I think we have to hold on to what Peter was actually saying, and that is we have to live as if Jesus is coming back and that what we do matters for the kingdom. So let's keep that, I mean, we could even just say that, um, you know, what we do for the kingdom matters. So pay attention to this. So, that, so then he says, therefore be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Above all, Love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Okay, so that's important because how do we offer hospitality in a time when we're not supposed to be near each other? Um, if you listen to the sermon, if you were there for the sermon on Sunday, I talked about how some people have shown hospitality to Nicole and she shared that with me. 
um, there are ways that we people are very creatively in, ama in amazing ways showing hospitality. But then here's the part that, that I wanted to really stress for today. It says, in, starting in verse 10, it says, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. So I haven't been given the gift of music, but I've been given my own gifts. And so each one should use whatever gift he or she has received to serve others, to serve others, uh, not just God, but serve others faithfully, administering God's grace in its various forms. And then, here's the part that, that God really poked me with today. It says, if anyone speaks, he should, she should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he or she should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ, and to him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Um, each and every one of us is fully capable. We have gifts. We have the tools that we need. We have supplies on hand to be able to serve other people um, in the way that brings God glory. And that might be... Um, through writing cards, through making phone calls and, and checking in on people. It could be um, by f posting funny memes on each other's Facebook page or just rem reminding each other through texts or phone calls that, that we are loved. Um, it could be buying guacamole for a friend and dropping it on her front porch. Um, it's happened twice and it can never happen too many times. Uh, not for me anyway. Um, so, so how are you going to serve someone else today? And how are you going to serve someone else tomorrow? And, how, and, and I hope that as you search for ways um, to be in ministry with each other, that you rem remember that we're doing it so that God will be praised, so that, God, um, that people will see how God is at work in the world. Um, stay tuned. Come back on Sunday because I think we're going to have a really fun children's time and nobody's going to want to miss it. I miss seeing you guys all the time um, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. I also don't know how to, oh, I can't see. Huh. I'm blinded.